G'day good people, Sal Art Beer Cup. Dave here, thanks for clicking on my video. Everyone that moves to Thailand has their own unique reasons why they moved here. They had their own unique Thailand story. And this is my Thailand story. So, my Thailand story. Well, I first set foot in Thailand in August of 1994, 30 years ago, nearly 30 years ago. I had a stopover in Bangkok for two, maybe three nights, I think it was, I can't remember now, on my way to the UK. I had two nights at the Bioke, what is it, the Bioke Tower Hotel, I think that's what it's called. So yeah, had two, maybe three nights there. And um, the first thing that struck me, besides the, the intense heat and humidity slapping me in the face like a hot, wet sponge, and the crazy traffic, <laughs> other than those two things, the first thing that struck me was the people. The people, like when the, the airport transfer, the transfer from the airport to the hotel, the guy in the, I think it was a van, the guy in the van, he was so nice and polite and everything, because by the time I got out the airport and into the van, I was dripping wet with sweat, and he's, oh, you're hot, you're hot, and he had this little bag thing, it must have had ice in it, and the towels were damp, he had these small little face towels, and he gave me about three of them when I got in the van, wiped my face down and wiped my arms down, and everything, I was dripping wet. And uh, yeah, it was really nice. Then the hotel staff, like checking in and everything, and they, they took my bags up to my room and all that sort of stuff. They were just really, really nice. I'd never experienced anything like it. In fact, it, it seemed over the top to me. It seemed, I don't know, it seemed, sometimes it seemed fake. And I just wondered if maybe they were taking the piss. Sometimes I actually thought that. Yeah, that, that's, that's how nice these people were. And, um, but later on, I come to realize that that's just, that is how a lot of Thai people are. Um, having said that though, later on, I think it was the same day, later on that day, it might've been the next day, I can't remember, it's 30 years ago, but um, I went for a walk around the Pratunam area where, where the hotel was where the Bio Hotel is. Um, I walked probably 20 metres up the road or something, not far. And uh, I don't know, a tuk tuk tri tr driver tried to scam me something about going to a gold shop or something. Apparently that's an, a common scam, still is apparently. I don't know, I've never been. But yeah, he tried to scam me. And then as I was walking away from that tuk tuk, a guy, he was sat on the side of the road near his car and he walked up towards me and he had this like little wad of photos of what I assume were women. And he walked up to me and he says, oh, you want boom, boom. And he tried to show me the photo. I'm like, no, no, thank you, no. And I uh, walked away and I was a little bit shocked actually, a little bit, it never ever happened to me, you know. Young guy in my 20s, and um, yeah, I was a bit taken aback by that. And I carried on walking, and um, I was in this market, found myself in the market, and uh, these guys, um, I was look, looking at these watches, they're obviously fake watches. Oh, these are, these are genuine Rolex watches. Yeah, right, the, I don't know what they were, 100 baht or something, I can't remember. Um, yeah. Oh, no, no thank you, no thank you. But actually later on, later on, I think it was the next day, I did actually end up buying two of these fake Rolex watches. One of them started running backwards before it cacked itself, and the other one actually ran for a good long time and, and kept good time too. And then um, walking around the market more, and there's this guy's trying to sell me a suit. And I'm like, no thank you, no thank you, you know, I don't want a suit, I don't wear suits. <laughs> 
And I, as I'm walking away, had my back to him, walking away, and he's walking up to me, trying to measure me, you know, measure me across the shoulders and everything. I'm turning around. No, I don't want a suit. <laughs> so yeah, that that was my introduction to Thailand. 30 years ago, I can't believe it was 30 years ago. I really enjoyed Thailand, I, I loved it, and um, I always wanted to come back, but you know, life gets in the way, and yeah, I didn't come back for, oh, until 2010, 16 years later. Um, I had two nights, no, it was three nights, three nights in the Labua State Tower in Bangkok, and then five nights, I think it was, in um, Phuket at the Merlin Beach Resort, just up the hill from Patong. Absolutely beautiful resort it was. Absolutely fantastic. And I loved it. I, li I didn't like Patong. Didn't like Patong, it was too busy and crazy. And... But the rest of Phuket, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, after that trip, uh, I found myself thinking about Thailand a lot a hell of a lot and um, yeah I wanted to come back wanted to come back and see more um, didn't have the money had to save save some money and um, but yeah in the meantime I was like researching and just like reading about Thailand and all that sort of stuff online and um, I ended up I ended up going on a <laughs> I ended up going on a dating website, just curious. Wasn't looking for anything, anyone, I mean, because I obviously was in no position to move there or anything. But, um, yeah, I, I just curious, had a look on this dating site. It was um, Thai Love Links. I don't think it exists anymore, or it's been taken over by someone else or whatever, I don't know. And I spoke to a few, spoke to a few women on there, and. But um, one in particular did grab my attention. Um, she was really nice and she was so careful, like really, really careful. Played her cards really close to her chest. And um, you know, she wouldn't give out too much personal information really. And, um, and I liked that. I actually liked that. I thought she's, she's smart, this one. She's, you know, very very careful and I liked that 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 was a big attraction that was a big attraction for me to her it was um, that she was really really careful um, and she was cute and sweet too let's be honest um, <laughs> but yeah it took a it took a long time like we talked almost every day well we did it was but it was it was every day and um, like on face what was it FaceTime with the iPad, FaceTime and MSN, remember MSN? <laughs> and uh, then Facebook Messenger and everything. And we talked to each other every day for, I don't know, six months or so. And uh, over that time, she slowly um, opened up a bit and, and um, yeah, like sort of trusted in me a little bit more. Well, a lot more actually by that time. And uh, after about six months, we decided it'd be a good idea if we were to to meet up. So that's what we did. I booked a ticket to Bangkok. It was on the 1st of August, 2000 1st of August, 2012 it was. And um, yeah, so I booked my ticket and went off to Bangkok to meet her. And we met, she picked me up at the Makassan uh, Airport Rail Link in Bangkok. And um, we had, I think it was two weeks, and we had a whale of a time. We hit it off straight away, and we had an awesome time. And like after the first week, we were already planning my next trip. <laughs> and that next trip, that was in, in December. Um, yeah, it was just after Christmas, just right between Christmas and New Year. And uh, it was actually that next trip that we actually got married. I know, crazy, hey? <laughs> yeah, it all happened really quick. 
And in the first 12 months, within the first 12 months, I went to see Noi in Thailand uh, four times, I think it was. And um, she'd come out to see me as well. So we, we did spend quite a bit of time together, but we were still apart a lot. And, um, and it was hard for that first, you know, for a while it was hard. For the first couple of years, it was hard. Um, but we ended up getting used to it. You know, I'd go see her two, three times a year. She'd come and see me. And it was mainly me that came to Thailand to see her. But after a while, it was just, it became like normal. That was our, that was our lifestyle. That's, yeah, it was just normal to us. And over those years, we, you know, we'd talk about um, either her coming to live in Australia or me moving to Thailand. Um, getting attacked by something, I don't know what it was, some sort of insect. Anyway, yeah, we talk about, um, you know, being together on a permanent basis and everything. Um, but to start with, it was like she was gonna come to Australia. Um, but that changed all the time, you know? No, oh, no, no, no! I'll come to I'll come to Thailand, and you know that that changed a few times over the years, and um, and eventually it changed, and it was set in concrete that I'd move to Thailand. In fact, um, in 2014, only a couple of years after we met, I um, I was made redundant from an engineering place that I worked at, and. Um, yeah, that tipped my whole world upside down eventually. Um, I couldn't find sustainable ongoing employment. And I was worried because I had a mortgage to pay for. So I ended up, I sold the house and moved to Thailand. And I didn't have anywhere near enough equity, nowhere near enough. And um, I basically came to Thailand with not much more than just to maintain my visa crazy. Um, it was either going to make me or break me. Well, it broke me. The plan was I was going to I was going to study and become an English teacher and Noi was going to support me through that. And um, it lasted three months. Um, every time we went out and bought stuff, she'd buy it with her credit card. Because she had like, she was paying for two houses as well and yeah, she, she had a bit, fair bit of debt too. And um, I didn't want to get into more and more debt supporting me. It was just, yeah, it was just going to end in tears otherwise. Um, and I realised that and I fell into a pretty bad slump of depression. And I ended up going back to Australia with nothing. I went back to Australia with a suitcase of clothes. That's, that's it, that's all I had. And I rebuilt my life. Um, and I did, I did rebuild my life. Wasn't easy, but yeah. You know, it was hard uh, trying to find a job, uh, working for agencies like factory work and working on building sites and foundries, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I was even a taxi driver for a minute there as well. That was crap, that job. <laughs> um, and then I ended up, well, I had to, I had to, you know, manufacturing was dead. In, well, it still is dead in Australia. So I ended up uh, retraining. I ended up uh, studying disability care. So I studied my certificate, for, uh, certificate three in disabilities. And um, during that time, I'd get bits and pieces of work, but nothing to really sustain, nothing that was sustainable properly, nothing secure. And then after, after I um, finished studying, I got, my job, I got a job in disabilities fairly quickly and um, never looked back, really. Uh, I enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. I loved my job. Um, yeah, it did turn pear-shaped in the end, but that's another story. And then um, eventually, in 2019 it was, I bought a uh, little one-bedroom unit. And it was so nice to have my own place again after renting 
for a while. And when I, when I moved into my unit, my dad was actually in hospital at the time. When The day I moved into my unit, he'd been in for a few days. Uh, he wasn't well. Anyway, the, the day after I moved in, like I just spent my first night in my new unit and I was woken up early in the morning with a phone call from the hospital. Um, they, uh, they said my dad had died in his sleep. He passed away in his sleep that night and it was his 90th birthday. So yeah, he died on his 90th birthday the day after. I hadn't even been in my unit 24 hours, so as you can imagine, that really... And from that time on, life started to get really difficult. Um, oh, breaking, breaking the news to my mum, that was probably the most difficult thing. Well, it was. It's, I would have to say, it would have to be the most difficult thing that I'd ever had to do in my life. That was so bloody hard to do. Without going too deep and personal into it, it was a really difficult time, very, very difficult time. Um, like looking after my mum, making everything, making sure everything was okay for her. And, um, and then she, her health started sliding downhill. Um, I won't go into details, but um, yeah, it, it was a really difficult time. And then like she got really, really sick, really ill. And it was about 18 months after my dad passed away, my mum passed away. And um, I felt guilty. I felt guilty because I felt relieved. Because I was like looking after my mum, working these ridiculously long hours and um, taking care of her, making sure she was okay. And yeah, when she, when she died, I, actually, I felt relieved. And then I started feeling guilty because I felt relieved. But then I realized that's actually a normal part of the grieving process. So, and that, that guilt didn't last long and, and the, the, the relief didn't last long either. Because then it was like, I have had no reason to be in Australia anymore. And I was trying, desperately trying to find a way to move to Thailand to be with Noi. That's all I wanted to do, was to move here and move to Thailand and be with Noi. Oh, I looked at ways of making money online. I even, I even started doing a digital marketing course. No, it wasn't for me. It just wasn't my style at all. But it wasn't only that. It was like COVID hit as well. Like just after my dad died, COVID hit. And it was nearly two years, nearly two bloody years that I didn't see my wife. And all the shit that I'd been through with my mum and, and you know, her passing away and, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't an easy time at all. Yeah, Australia was locked down for nearly two years. It, it had reverted back to a, a prison colony, really. Yeah, mm, that's another story. I was looking for ways to make money online that would suit me. Like I, I looked into drop shipping and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I looked into all sorts of things, drop shipping and me. And then one day during that time, I, I went online, I went onto realestate.com.au and I just, let's have a look, see how much my unit's worth. And uh, I could not believe what I saw. It had almost doubled in value since I bought it. And I remember, I remember that day very well. I looked at that and I actually started to cry. I actually wept. I thought, yes, this is it. This could be my ticket to Thailand. So I, I rang up a real estate agent and I said, like, you know, I just realestate.com.au is telling me the you know, price of my unit and uh, can you come out and you know appraise it for me? Tell me what it's worth. So uh, yeah, he did that and then and ended up he said it was more, worth more. So yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna go into the details of exactly how much money I'm not, I'm not doing that. My finances are my business, so. Um, but yeah, it had doubled, nearly doubled in value 
So um, over the next few months, the fun began. Like trying to reduce my life down to, what was it in the end? It was two suitcases and a guitar case in the end. <laughs> like I was selling stuff, I was giving stuff away, I was throwing stuff away. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of work, a lot of time, all the crap that I'd accumulated over the years. And um, yeah, got it all packed down into two suitcases and a guitar case. Wasn't getting rid of my guitar, uh-uh, no way, not gonna happen. <laughs> so yeah, then I, I put the unit on the market and then, um, yeah, had a, I had an open inspection on the, on, I think it was on a Saturday, I can't remember. I think it was on a Saturday, I had open inspection. And then I think it was the following Thursday, I got a phone call from a real estate agent. I played this clip from my very first ever YouTube video. I'm a happy man and for good reason. I've just arrived at work. And just as I arrived at work, I got a phone call from my real estate agent. I've just got an offer, a really, really good offer on my unit. Obviously, I accepted the offer. Um, the settlement is on the 26th of September. That's like two months away. In two months, I'll be with Noi in Thailand in two months. That hasn't sunk in yet. Noi, here I come, babe. Thailand, here I come, babe. This is me packing up my life and moving it to Thailand. What a mess. What was my nice clean unit is now a mess. Yeah, well, that is my life packed up into three bags and one guitar case. Problem is, my life is too heavy. <laughs> I need to get rid of 20 kilograms of my life. I'm allowed 40 kilos, I've got 60 kilos. I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but I've gotta do it. I may have to pay a little bit extra for luggage, I don't know. We will see. Oh, well, I've got it down to two suitcases, or two bags, and a guitar case. Um, I'm just about smack on, 40 kilograms, but I've still got about 10 kilograms worth of stuff that I haven't packed yet, that I can't pack yet, that I need until I actually leave, so. I'm going to be paying for extra luggage. I think it's 300 and something dollars for 10 kilograms. Anyway, such is life. So yeah, the profit from the sale of my unit will be enough to last me uh, three years. And then I will be able to access my self-managed super fund, which has performed astronomically well, really, really well. Um, and then Noi and I will be able to live a very comfortable life for the rest of our lives. Yeah, so there you go. That's, that's my Thailand story. Um, if you want, give us a, a brief thing in the comments, brief comment about your Thailand story. I'd be interested to hear it. Interested to hear it. We all have our own reasons, personal reasons, why we moved to Thailand. Um, yeah, some of those reasons are because it's just too bloody expensive in the West, etc, etc. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's my Thailand story. Alright guys, I'm going to wind it up here. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are a returning viewer to my channel and you're not subscribed, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps the channel immensely. It really helps a lot. Okay, guys, I'm gonna wind it up here. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.